Hey, today we have a mixing trick for you not to go crazy when you're finishing up your mixes. Let's do this. If you're like me, you're trying to get better at automation, always. Never forgetting to do automation, make your song more dynamic, more interesting, automating multiple parameters, and of course, automating the volume of each track according to each section, so it comes in nice and quiet sometimes, sometimes it's louder. You also have to automate vocals in order for them to always be present in your mix. Automation is very essential, right? But there's one common mistake we all made at some point, and I'm gonna teach you how not to make that mistake again. And that mistake is so simple. You see, I have just a drum mix right here nothing too special but i've done something crazy i've automated all of the tracks and i've done this to demonstrate for you guys how this works but if i change here in ableton by pressing this little button here to go to the automation screen i can see all the crazy automation i've done i know this is extreme but guys i'm just trying to prove a point here okay i'm just trying to show you guys the simplest way possible so all i did here i got my drum mix and i went like this Woo! yeah look at this i just went like this why did I do this? To pretend, because I like to pretend. Sometimes pretending is good, so we can make things a little bit clearer in our hearts and our souls. So let's imagine, let's pretend that this is a lot of effort you put into the automation of your drum mix. You're like, oh man, I spent hours drawing and writing this automation out. I have the perfect automation for my drums. I'm so happy with it. This is so cool. When I move into this other view right here, I can see all the faders moving and it looks so pretty, so pretty. Oh, look at that one. Look at that one go. Little slow one here, right at the top. Now that one goes down, woo! And up, whoa! That goes down, oh my god. Those ones are moving as well. They're all moving, it's so pretty, right? You feel so accomplished, like I automated my song and it sounds perfect. It totally doesn't sound like I just moved the pencil around the automation drawing mode. No, it doesn't sound like that. It sounds perfect. And I'm so proud of this mix with all the automation. Well, let's say that's the truth. But then you're mixing it, doing the final, very final mix of your song. And you're like, mm, Mm, the snare could be a little bit louder throughout the whole song. So I'm just gonna put it a little bit louder, right? I'm gonna do this and oh, oh no, my little red dot, it went away. The automation went away. And then if I make the automation come back in Ableton by pressing this little button here, my change is gone. So the volume that I just put up is down again. So what I have to do is go to my snare track and just choose the whole automated thing and put it up like this. And that's kind of clunky, right? I wish I could just move my fader and the automation would move up all together. What can we do to fix this? It's so simple, guys. First of all, f*** this. F*** all of this automation. This is not the right way to automate your track. So let's delete it all. No more automation in any of the tracks. Why, you might ask? Because the best way to automate a track is by using utility. Yes, the plugin utility that comes with Ableton. So you put utility as the last plugin on your chain in all of the channels that you want to automate. So less plugin in the chain. And instead of automating the fader, the main fader here in Ableton, we are gonna automate the output gain in utility. So you go back to the automation drawing mode, you click the output gain for the channel you want to automate. It shows up right here. You're automating utility gain. And now you can do all your crazy automation again. You're gonna do all the crazy stuff you were doing before and you have it right there. But the difference is when I'm back to doing my final mix and I wanna move the fader of the kick right here, you see the automation is still happening down here in the utility game, but I can still control the overall volume of my kick across the whole mix. How simple is that? It's super cool. So lesson of the day, never automate the main Ableton fader here, because you're gonna regret it when you're doing the final mix in the future. Always automate on utility. You have a gain up right here, you're gonna automate it, it's gonna be super easy, just as easy as automating the faders, and you're done. And you can stop fearing moving your faders when you're mixing your song, because it's not gonna override your automation at all. Isn't that cool? I do that for vocals, I do that for drums, I do that for everything. I always automate using utility. And of course, and if at some point you just don't want the automation anymore, you can always delete utility and the automation is gone. How cool is that? So I hope you appreciate this little simpler video that I've made today. If you have any more questions about how to use Ableton the best way possible, you can always book a Zoom session with me, a private Zoom session with me, and I can answer your questions. Just go to my website and book there. But yeah, super simple, right? I hope you like the simpler video. I'm planning a lot of more complicated videos, but I still have to cater to the YouTube algorithm, right? So I still have to come out with videos every week. But more complicated videos coming out soon, more songwriting, more writing songs from scratch, more 
everything. So please subscribe to the channel, press all the buttons that help me out there in this world, and I see you guys next time. Bye.